the beast is about to be unleashed. <laughs> the beast, meaning the IRS. No one likes the IRS. I get it. And obviously, everyone should pay what they owe. Unless, of course, you're a private equity investor, in which case the IRS gives you a special tax bracket, courtesy of Kristen Cinema, Chuck Schumer, Joe Manchin, and the rest of them. But, you know, everybody's supposed to pay their taxes. And now, and now the Biden administration is putting $80 billion, nearly $80 billion, towards hiring 80,000 some more IRS agents because they want to make sure that everyone pays up. Is this really going to work well? Or is this going to be another political disaster, just like their idea to look at everyone's bank accounts who's ever had more than $600 in their bank accounts? Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am Trish. Great to have you here on The Trish Regan Show. A quick reminder that portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest in precious metals than right now. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. Again, LegacyPMInvestments.com. Important, given all the inflation that we are seeing. Anyway, um, one other quick note for you. If you have not subscribed to the full audio version of this podcast, do me that favor. Make sure you go to Apple iTunes, go to Spotify, go to Pandora or Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts, and subscribe to the full audio version. It's all here for you every day for free. So please do me that favor. Anyway, I, I'm just appalled here because somehow the answer to not having enough tax revenue is to just, oh, hire more IRS agents and then you'll be all set. <laughs> Look, I, again, I'm not advocating that people not pay their taxes. Let me be very clear on that because it's actually critical that people pay what they owe Otherwise, we'll turn into a country like Greece, which, if you recall, during the European debt crisis, it came to light that nobody was actually really paying what they owed. There was this huge underground economy. And uh, I think one example they showed us was with swimming pools, right? Because you had to pay a certain tax if you had a swimming pool. And so nobody had a swimming pool, allegedly. And then it turned out when you went and did these aerial photos from high above in a plane, it turned out there were all these swimming pools. What do you know, right? So people were trying to avert the taxes that they would otherwise face. And this is what happens if you live in an economy where the government is so onerous as to tax, in fact, too much, which we can save that debate for another time. I would just argue in this particular instance that it's going to have the opposite of the intended effect. In other words, when the IRS says we are going to hire this many more agents and we are going to make sure that everybody's paying as much as they should, who are they going to go after? They tell us it's the 1%, but uh, hey, the 1%, they've already got a pretty sweet deal, right? I mean, hey, the Senate just passed it officially. Kirsten Cinema said she wouldn't sign on unless they got rid of that you know, closing of the tax loophole that benefits billionaire investors, the private equity tax loophole as it's known, so that those that are being paid a billion dollars, and in some cases, some people are paid a billion dollars to manage money and to help people invest, instead of treating that as income and having them pay the top bracket 37%, they get to pay, you know, 20% and change. And it's perfectly legal. Wild, right? But but, you know, if you have a small corporation, you're a small business owner, you better make sure that you dot your I's and you cross your T's because Uncle Sam is coming looking for you here. And uh, they, uh, they're going to put 80,000 more people to work. <laughs> That's one way to help the job market, I guess, uh, looking at everybody's taxes. Again, enforcement's important, but let's also keep in mind our priorities. I would look back to the previous administration, which collected more in tax revenue. Think about this. The Trump administration collected more in tax receipts than any other administration at any point in history. And they did that because they created incentives for corporations to want to make more money, for individuals to want to make more money, for money to come back on shore. And so it seems to me the logical way to do this is to create the right kinds of incentives. It's the carrot stick philosophy, right? So that you're making sure that you bring all that money here because you want it to be here as opposed to saying, hey, you know, 
We're putting $80 billion into enforcement, so watch out. Just to keep in mind how much money that is, you know, you could actually, you could actually enforce the border. You could actually patrol the border for a fraction of that amount. My friends over at the Committee to Unleash Prosperity calculated the numbers, and they came up with, oh, it cost you $20 billion if you wanted to hire enough border agents to really and truly police that border. And then they also pointed out that for half the amount of money, you know, roughly uh, 40, 40 billion, you could actually make sure that you shored up our military. We're actually not, not doing so great on the recruit front. Not many people are joining the, the military right now. So there's a lot of things that you could do f- with that money. I'm not saying you, you even need to spend it, but the IRS, really guys? <laughs> It's like they can't get out of their own way. I mean, I don't know how you're going to package this one, but remember when they told us how they wanted to go after fat cats, but somehow it meant anybody who had more than $600 in a bank account? <laughs> really? Really? That's, that's what you want to do with your spare time. Go after the people who have $600 in their bank account. Um, I want to get in a quick word from one of our great sponsors that cares very much that we keep the administration and the IRS out of those bank accounts worth $600, and that's AMAC, the Association for Mature American Citizens. You can go to amac.us slash Regan, and you can sign up, or you can actually renew your subscription if you already have one today for just $16 for the entire year. This is a community, over 2 million of us, mature American citizens that care about things like tax policy and care about the the economic policy that's going to matter in the future, in the here and now, and in the future. And so the great thing is you can join forces with this great group of very like-minded people like you and me, while simultaneously getting all the perks of being part of AMAC, which includes restaurant discounts and hotel discounts, travel discounts, all kinds of great things, cell phone plan discounts, as well as some help trying to figure out what insurance you may need. It's all there, and it's just $16 a year. So go to amac.us slash Regan, my last name, amac.us slash Regan, my last name, for more on all of that today. In the meantime, um, back to this IRS thing. I mean, I, I'm just kind of offended. <laughs> I, 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 I sound like I'm like, you know, one of the, the woke ones right now because I'm offended at everything, but I'm, I'm offended when they, they think that the, the answer is to somehow just go after every Tom, Dick, and Harry and Jane and Susan and Sally and This is who will be affected. It will be your middle class. As much as they're going to try and tell you, oh, it's the 1%. No, no, no. Just in terms of, if you have that many IRS agents, who are they going to go after? And they can't, as I keep saying, they can't go after the people that they should go after, which are the billionaires that get away with the great deal on the tax front because we've got lawmakers that are so concerned about making sure they have enough money for their next campaign. I told you yesterday about all the money. I mean, Kirsten Cinema is one example. She's got donations, individual donations from the private equity industry totaling over 500000 for her last campaign. I mean, that is a lot of money, right? And I'm just looking at the numbers, 54900 from executives over at KKR, 35000 at Carlisle, 27300 over at Apollo. The private equity industry is a very big lobbying organization. In fact, they probably spend more money than any other industry right now. They're on K Street, and one of the reasons they're doing this is to give themselves the beneficial treatment when it comes to taxes. Do you know that Chuck Schumer collected $1.28 million from the private equity industry, including Blackstone and KKR? So you really think that he's that interested in raising taxes on this particular group of people? Go back and listen to Monday's podcast if you want an explainer there on why this is income and why it should be treated as income and why this is just highway robbery, frankly, of the American people and of our government not to treat it as income. But, you know, th- these people in Washington, I'll tell you, the whole system is so darn corrupt. When you, when you see what just went down, And when you see that they're going to effectively inflate, again, the U.S. economy artificially by spending all this money while simultaneously adding another $80 billion to go after everyday folks from the IRS, all, all, while saying we're going to give a pass 
to those private equity investors. I mean, give me a break. It's not investment. It's income, and they need to be taxed as such. Anyway, it, it's, it's really pretty disgusting. But the whole thing is just disgusting. I mean, the, the idea that they want to pass this off, the name itself, as somehow an inflation reduction act. Guys, you're just spending more money. All right, before I get to that, I do have one more thing I want to mention to you. You know, it's summer and we're all looking for movies. And I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard sometimes, kind of hard to find a good sort of family movie that you can enjoy watching that is representative of your values. This is where this movie in particular comes in. I, I, when I was a kid, I used to watch Kirk Cameron on uh, what was that show? Oh, you know what? I got to look it up right now as I'm talking to you. This is how you know I'm recording uh, in real time. Uh, he had that 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 sitcom. I remember that sitcom really, really well. Anyway, he's got a new movie out, a new movie that he's backing. Um, he, you know, he's a he's a very big Christian. He's an evangelical growing pains, growing pains. That was the sitcom. I remember that now. Anyway, he's got a, a, a new movie that is just out and um, it's pretty neat. It's It's got a good message and I think it, it's worth taking a look at as you're looking for things to watch and be entertained by. It's nice to be supporting people that care about some of the same values as you may you may care about. Um, so this is called Life Mark. It tells the story of David, who has this very comfortable world that gets totally turned upside down when his birth mother unexpectedly reaches out to him and she's looking to meet him. He's 18 years old at that point. She only had the chance to hold him once and she went looking for him and, and he finds this out. So it's really it's, it's an interesting storyline and, and probably one that happens a lot. He gets encouragement from his adopted parents, and so he embarks on this life-altering journey, um, which, which really is a process of discovery, and it leads to a pretty staggering truth from his past. Inspired by a true story, Life Mark is a powerful reminder that one decision, one choice can impact so much more than one life. It's a pro-family, pro-love, pro-forgiveness, pro-reconciliation, and pro-new beginnings kind of movie. So take a look at it. If you're looking for a movie, watch this one. I think you'll enjoy it. It's called, again, Life Mark. So see Life Mark in theaters. It's nationwide beginning September 9th, or you can get your ticket in advance. Just go to lifemarkmovie.com. Again, that's lifemarkmovie.com. But a, a, a nice a nice film to see. Anyway, getting back to the nitty gritty of this finance stuff that's really, really kind of offensive in so many ways, given what they're about to put through, and it's hundreds of billions of dollars worth of new spending. Now, one of the ideas here is that they're going to collect more taxes from companies and and you know, look, I get it. It's not right that a company earning billions of dollars would be able to not have to pay any federal tax. But the reason, the reason that is, is because of the depreciation acceleration schedule that Congress, by the way, put into being. They're not willing to actually change that, like, like the actual messed up system that they put in. Instead, they're just going to make sure that everybody has this alternate 15% tax if you're making more than a billion dollars. Again, look, I, you know, it's hard for me to feel terribly bad for companies making more than a billion dollars, but I would argue this, that part of the reason the acceleration for the depreciation schedule was actually put into being was so that we could attract more capital here to the United States of America. We wanted more capital coming to work here. So now, apparently, we don't want it anymore, I guess. I mean, it will be harmful, for example, to certain industries, including the manufacturing industry, which will take its toll on the overall economy. So we're in this mixed up world where you have a government that, on the one hand, wants to print more money, right, and give it all to the green energy companies, hundreds of millions of dollars, yet while well, simultaneously is saying, all right, we're going to tax all these other corporations at a greater rate. And so it's kind of schizophrenic. And I don't think they know which end is up. And consequently, we're going to be tied in knots here that I think could have a, a lasting impact. And I do not see us getting out of this recessionary style environment anytime soon. The U.S. is, by my definition, by any textbook definition, in a recession. Now, I mean, hey, you know, it may not be that bad given where the jobless rate is. 
But who's to say it's not going to get worse when you combine it with these really, really poor, poorly thought out policies. And so I think this one is just another example of when government gets in the way. And that's what they're doing. They're getting in the way. And it's not going to help. It's only going to hurt. But ultimately, it'll come down to November. It'll come down to November. And I think that the Republicans probably have the best shot that they've had in so long. I've already been through the poll numbers with you. It's pretty remarkable. It looks like the Republicans are poised to take back the House, as they should. Because you know what? This has not gone well. We all know it. It has not gone well, and there's no indication that it's going to get any better anytime soon. Now, I have very little faith in any of these politicians, frankly, to be honest. Both sides. I mean, both sides are, are really, really messed up. But clearly, we can't continue spending like we're spending. We can't continue with a border policy that is so messed up, and we cannot continue with this lack of leadership on the international stage that leaves us consistently in no man's land. A quick reminder, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Do me that favor. Subscribe to this channel if you're watching on YouTube or on Rumble, the full video there, or go to Apple, Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, go to Spotify, look up the Trish Regan Show, and hit subscribe. It's really important right now. Share it with your friends. Make sure you get as many people as you can, and I'll see you right back here.